are recording the webinar this afternoon, and it will be available for viewing on our website. So you can um, refer back to that or share it with others. And we will have a full Q&A session at the end of the webinar today as well. So if you have any questions, just go ahead and um, send them in the question box, and we'll address those. Without further ado, I'm going to hand this over to Doug Morris to go over I email. Thanks, Brittany. Um, thank you, everyone, for making uh, time this afternoon, hopefully about a half hour, maybe less. Uh, we're going to go through uh, quickly here. Um, as Brittany said, this is the uh, full CRM uh, experience, if you will. Uh, but before we get started, a little bit about CSI you may or may not know. Uh, we've been around since 92. We are the, um, we like to say the most experienced diamond solution provider, but uh, that does make us the oldest. So uh, I don't know if that's good or bad in a technology world. Uh, we consider ourselves the leading provider of add-on products to the diamonds community. Like iEmail, these products have a manual. They have full-time full -time support team behind them, uh, an installer and all that fun stuff. Our original product uh, over 10 years ago was iMerge the most powerful way to merge records in IMS. And people wanted to close events and not lose all their data, so we made Meeting Closer. Two of our hottest products today are our import product. Uh, basically, people are getting data from all over the place these days, as you know, and they need to get it into IMS. cool thing about that is it will not only update, uh, not only insert, but it will update. It will set usernames and passwords, all sorts of fun things. IMAP is our geolocation tool. CSI Donate is the most powerful donation product for IMS, the easiest to use as well. Page filter, when you want to change something in RISE or public view and you just can't. If you are a, using IMS fundraising, you should have freeze, the ability to edit a gift after it's been posted. Uh, I document for when you lose your uh, IMS uh, guru at your organization and you don't know what he or she has done. So document it before they leave. And then while we're here today, I email. So I email has over 450 clients. Uh, the product has gotten better over the years because we listen to your suggestions and your needs. So you can always tell us something you wanted to do, and we're normally all ears. And one of those enhancements that came about recently was someone said, hey, for a legal perspective, I need to actually save the actual email in IMIS. Not just the text of the email, I need the full email. That's known as an EML file, as you've seen. You might have ever received one in an email. When you open it, it's the full email. Well, the cool thing about that suggestion is it allowed us to enhance I email in ways that we never thought possible. Uh, and that's what we're going to show you today. So beforehand, a lot of people are going, well, I can still email from IMIS now, and why would I use I email? Well, there's still no faster way to email. I need to email an individual. I can do it from my Outlook faster than I can do it from any other product. If I need to email a committee, I can do it instantly. Same thing with a small event roster. If I need to let someone know about a change to an event and there's less than 200 people going to it, I can do it instantly in Outlook. I can use IQA as well. And hey, if you're still on 10.6 or something like that, uh, or even one of the 20s, ad hocs are still supported. Yes, ad hoc. And the great thing is you can track all of those emails, which gives you the full cycle communication with your members. <clears throat> There's an article called 11 CRM Best Practices. I think they had 10, and they thought, ooh, let's add one more. I'm not going to cover all of them today, but I'm going to talk about what some of them are and how they apply to you, IMS, and iEmail. So one of the best practices is to make sure your customer and or member data is reliable and up to date. Well, the best way to do that is make sure all of your email addresses live in one place, and that's IMIS. Don't go saving them in your personal uh, address book on your computer. Update them in IMIS. Another best practice is to see that everyone who interacts knows about the history of the interactions with that member or customer. So the best way to do that is keep everything in IMIS, keep all history, all emails, both sent and received in IMIS. Even more important, know how and where they're interacting with you. 
And so track everything, not just emails. Think about a phone call, think about an interaction, think about a meeting. All of those should be tracked as well. Provide personalization that customers and members crave. That's not a mass email where dear first name is dear Doug. That's a personal email or better yet a phone call. So that's a personal email from my outlook to the member saying, hey, how you doing? But don't underestimate the value of human interaction. Always preaching that to everyone here. Pick up the phone, call them. Ensure that your customer representatives, customer service reps are well trained. You can train, but I think there's nothing more powerful than tracking and monitoring. And if you're monitoring all of the communications they're having with your members, that's huge. Share data amongst your different departments. How do you do that? One database, IMIS. Everything goes in it. Finally, follow up with customers. Use the Tickler and IMIS for, and Outlook, right? We, we can support both of them. Super powerful. So what's our best practice set up? Well, we're going to create an activity type for each type of email we want. We're going to look, use the lookup feature on specific fields as necessary. Hint, department. I love that one, right? Which department is this email for? Don't hesitate to turn your email activities in IMIS into tasks. Cue the ooh and the ah. And then repeat it for specific task activities. So remember, any activity in IMIS can be turned into a task. That task can appear in IMIS. Uh, right now, it appears only in the desktop. But the next release of IMIS uh, is actually in the staff view as well. So your tickler, the things you're supposed to work on, appear right there. So what do we say to Jerry? We say to Jerry, show me the money. Let's go ahead and see this in action. Let's see what it really looks like in the real world. So I'm going to jump into my Outlook. And I've got some emails here. I'm going to start from the bottom. I'll be honest with you, I never start from the bottom at work. I always start from the top, and I'm answering emails that have already been answered. But whatever. I'm going to start from the bottom. Uh, Tricia has sent us an email. Let's open it up. She's not sure who to reach out to. Uh, she wants to rejoin. She's now changed companies, and she wants to be part of the association again. Perfect. Let's get this into IMIS, and let's assign it to that Doug Morris guy. So I'm going to take her email, and I'm going to insert it into IMIS. When I insert into IMIS, notice it cannot find Tricia because Tricia has changed organizations. No big deal. She's still in our database, so I hit find, and I go out here and I look for her. There we go. We found her. So we found her out there, and we're going to go ahead and insert this into IMIS. Before we do that, let's jump over to the Activity Detail tab. I can say what type of activity to insert this as. Is it a welcome email? Is it a resume? No, it's actually just a regular email. So I'm going to leave that alone. But what type of email is it? Well, let's see. It's actually, I don't know if that's feedback or a request for more info. I'll just put other for now. I'm going to put some notes out here. Doug, make sure you update her email address. We can see what it is out here. And let's go ahead and assign it to Doug so that he has to work on this. And he'll do it, he'll do it today when he logs into IMAX. So we're going to go ahead and drop this in, and this is the new cool thing we've added to iMail. Save the mail message as an EML file as an attachment. So everything in her email is going to end up in iMail. I hit save. I'm done. I can go delete this email if I want. I'm done. I've assigned it to Doug. What's that look like in the real world? Well, Doug's going to go ahead and log into iMail. And when he logs in, um, if he had his uh, uh, tickler tracking on, if you will, um, what he would be able to do is see all his activity tasks, but he doesn't have that on. So we're going to just do view activity tasks. There it is. I've got something to do today. Thank goodness. Click on it. Tricia has said, huh, hi there. I wasn't sure to reach out to, but could someone contact me? Ah, and it's assigned to me, and there's some notes here. Make sure you update her email address. Uh, there's her new email address. Perfect. Because I've opened up the activity task for her, when I go to customers, I'm right on her record. So step one, they told me to go ahead and make sure that we set her email address to what it belongs. OK, I got that done. That was easy. So save that. And I'm going to go out here and I'm going to maybe uh, build some dues for her and do some other fun things. 
But I need to tell her that, hey, Tricia, everything's good. So I'm going to jump back to the email that was sent in. I'm going to double click it, and I'm going to hit attachment. Now, no matter what computer I'm on, when I open this attachment, it opens up that email, even though it wasn't sent to me. So now I'm logged in as Doug Morris. I could go ahead and hit reply, say, Tricia, we took care of everything. Um, maybe say, hey, you know, I've set up your username. Go ahead and log in and reset your password. All these other things. Great to have you back. All of that fun stuff. Now, if I hit send, that's all fine and dandy, but someone looking at her record in IMIS can't tell, can't tell what's going on. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually drop this into IMIS, my response. So we're going to say send an insert activity. There we go. It's got the ID on that. There's the message. Here's the activity detail. This isn't an email. Let's make this a welcome email, right? So it's a welcome email. Notice some things have changed now. Different fields appear for my welcome email. So I can actually even categorize my welcome email as a welcome back email. I can save the whole email, once again, just by leaving that checkbox there and hit save. Save, sorry. Anybody looking now at Trisha's record in IMIS, what are they going to see? They're going to see all these activities. And we can see, oh, look at this. There's the welcome email. If I hit the attachment, that'll actually be your email. Or I can just read that Doug took care of everything. So all of my interactions with Trisha are <coughs> kept right there in IMIS. So as a staff member that's not Doug or the person that IMIS demo that got the first email, uh, I can actually see uh, everything, all the communications that have happened. Okay? So that's pretty powerful. So let's go and see what other kind of emails we've got today. Ah, Mary Morris. All right? She wants to work at our organization. And Mary Morris actually has a resume on here. We can go look at that resume if we want. And uh, we can see uh, Mary apparently does not want to work here. I thought she did, but anyway. Uh, so there's Mary Morris. And we're going to go back to the message. And we're going to insert this into IMIS. So we're going to drop it right in. The activity detail, it's not a welcome email. This is a resume. I can drop it right in there. And I can even say, hey, maybe I want my marketing department to see this. So I can set my department. That's totally up to you. I'm using department as an example. Same sort of thing, save an EML file attachment, save it. That entire interaction has been saved in IMIS. Anybody going into IMIS, I'm still logged in as Doug Morris, that's OK, can go and see there's her resume that she sent in. And I can hit the attachment, and I can open up that attachment and see her resume right here from IMIS. So super powerful. Uh, super good. What else do we have out there? Uh, Brittany. Brittany here. Brittany wants to present at the next NIAC conference. Same sort of thing. I can insert that. I can respond from um, IMIS if you want, because I'm not the one that handles this stuff, but she happened to email me, so that's okay. So activity detail. What has Brittany sent me? She sent me a regular email. What type of email did she want? She wants more information maybe. I can go ahead and assign this to John Smith, and he's out till tomorrow. So it's going to appear on his tickler tomorrow and say, John, uh, she is a great presenter. Uh, get her for NOLA. All right, so now she's all set, ready to go out there. So John can go in, log into IMIS, open up the email from Brittany that was not to him, and respond and say, hey, Brittany, happy to have you on board here. Last but not least, let's see what else we've got in here. Here's a complaint. Okay, John G. at our organization is not receiving any emails. Let us know what's up. Same sort of thing. I'm going to just drop it right into IMIS. This one, as I said, is a complaint. Now I can go ahead and assign it to someone, or maybe I just want to put it to a certain department, the membership department, and add some notes here. So all of these things are very easy to do right from Outlook. Same sort of thing, if I now, if I'm getting all these complaints or anything special like that, maybe it's time to send one of our committees a little bit of a info that we've got some upset members out there. Jump over here, committees. Uh, maybe it's my membership committee, and we've got uh, nobody on our membership committee. We'll, we'll go tell the education committee, oh, there's no one there either. Britain, we've got to fix this. We'll tell the awards committee that people are upset. 
jump out here. I'm going to just go ahead and email the award committee. Lots of member issues uh, generate more awards to make them happy. So there's a quick email right there to the committee. All sorts of fun things like that. Okay. Let's jump back. So what did you just see? Well, first thing is I made sure my member and customer data was reliable and up-to-date. How did I do that? I changed Trisha's email address in IMIS. So from Outlook, I did not need to go into IMIS. I assigned it to someone else. I told them what to do. They opened it. They made the change. I saw everyone who interacted with a given member. How did I do that? I showed that to you by clicking on the Activity tab that had all of our interactions for Trisha as well as others. Saw that both how and where my customer member was interacting with staff. Remember, I chose to insert the sent email so everyone at my organization could see that I'm a good guy and I did follow up. I provided the personalization that customers and members crave. How did I do that? I sent a personal email to Tricia from my own personal email account so she knew that I personally took care of it. I didn't send her some mapped, canned email that automatically was scheduled to go out tonight saying all set. I then underestimated the value of human interaction because I forgot to pick up the phone. I'll be honest with you, that's kind of hard to do in a webinar, but I'll work on it. So I should have picked up the phone maybe and called Tricia. I made sure my customer service reps were well-trained and well-behaved. I can see every communication they're having with my constituents. They're all on IMIS. I have my membership, customer service, everybody sharing the data. because They're all putting the email in IMIS, one database, so no matter which department is communicating with a constituent, I can see it. Finally, um, they have shared the data, one database, like I said, all emails track. So there you go. That's kind of a cool way to do things um, in terms of uh, IMIS and iEmail. I also followed up with my customers and members. I used the activity task system in IMIS to let that Doug guy know that we had to contact Tricia. I could have even, as Doug, synchronized that activity back into my Outlook so that my reminder could come from Outlook instead of IMIS. Shazam! All right, so this is for the old folks on the phone uh, like me. Shazam was a TV show. I highly recommend you look up Shazam TV show and watch the intro. I made Brittany watch it a little while ago. Really, really corny. It's a dorky guy and his grandfather traveling the country. And whenever they run into trouble, someone yells Shazam, and this cool-looking dude appears. Uh, actually, the dorky guy mor morphs into the cool-looking guy. So I thought that would be fun to share for the... Uh, for the young folk on the um, webinar. A couple things to remember here, right? You can have more than one activity type for iEmail. So iEmail can go and insert different activity types. You get to create them. You set them up in iMS, you tell iEmail about them, and then they're available to iEmail. Remember, each and every activity type that you set up in iMS and that you configure iEmail for can have different fields. So notice the e-resume on the right actually has a received from instead of a sent by and has a department field on it. So your fields can be different per activity type. I highly recommend you use lookup tables, right? Uh, don't have people manually typing in the accounting department because they could spell it a million different ways or type in ACCT, things like that. So use lookup tables out there. Power tip. I email knows and respects access keywords. Access keywords are just like a key to your house. You dole them out, you make them up, and you dole them out to certain staff. And then you can use them, and you can use them on activities. And if you don't have that proper access keyword, you can't see or edit or use that activity. I email respects those access keywords. So if you wanted to set up some activities that were just for, say, your foundation, you could do it. You got a confidential donor email, no problem. Only people in the foundation will be able to insert it with iEmail, and only people in the foundation will be able to see it in the desktop. All right? So 
super powerful, great way to hide it, especially if it's an EML file. There's no way someone can even query the database and see it if you take out the text from the email being saved in the activity. Just save the EML file. So what are your best practices? Your takeaway here, always save emails from people. That's members, prospective members, and former members. Don't forget to save emails when you send to those same folks as well. Categorize your emails. Create different activity types and or lookups within the activity. Assign to departments or individuals for follow-up. Always make sure you have a complete history of how your members are interacting with your staff. It's a full engagement management system. That's what IMS is all about. When I email, you can do that. If you saw something, you're like, that was really cool. Uh, I want to do that. Well, do us a favor. Check out the user guide. Most of what I showed is in the user guide. But if you don't feel like doing that, I'd like you to do it. If you don't feel like doing that or you don't get the answer you're looking for, go ahead and email us at support at csiinc.com. You want to share this webinar? That's the bottom link. If you want to share about I email with your coworkers, that's the top link. Last but not least, IEML Cloud is coming soon. IEML Cloud is a web-based version of IEML that will work with Office on the Web or Outlook uh, Web Access or whatever Microsoft just changed the name to today. I believe it's Outlook on the Web now. Outlook on the Web, um, uh, it will work with that. It will also automatically pop right into um, Outlook 2013 and higher. Uh, if you have Exchange Server 2013 or 16, it works too. It does not have all of the functionality of regular IEML desktop, but we are continuing to add to it. It uses the RESTful interface that ASI has made available in IMS 20.2 Q4 2015. So you got to be on that release as well. And if you're on that, there's really no software to install. It just works. Um, and if you happen to be one of those people on IMS 200 that somehow got on our webinar, it works with that too. Uh, it works in a fully hosted environment. You do not need to have access to the database. Uh, it is completely, uh, basically, software free, if you will. So uh, that's out there. If you're interested, don't hesitate to send us an email. Uh, and if you're launching on IMS 2000, uh, I'm sorry, IMS 20.2 Q4 2015 or higher and you're interested in trying it, uh, we'll work something out so you can uh, try it out and see what you think. So let's check out the questions we have. Oh my gosh, a lot of questions. We should stop recording here. Um, can you search uh, past uh, committee members or just current members at run date? You can do both as you saw. Um, so there you go. You can, uh, when I went in there by default, it's just the current committee members but I can choose past and whatnot from there. Uh, can you default the EML checkbox to true or false? Yes, it is sticky. So if you turn it on, it stays on for you and only you. Uh, and if you turn it off, it stays off for you and uh, you and only you. So it is sticky. Um, you can turn it on or off as you need to. Is it possible to enter follow-up tasks, including who they are assigned to using iImport or AI Plus? <laughs> Uh, yes, you could do that um, using iImporter AI Plus. So you could, um, AI Plus, Activity Importer Plus can create activities from an IQA. So I could go out there and make activities for follow-up based on an IQA that was seeing email activities that had responses due. Or, like I said, you can turn the actual email into the follow-up task. Uh, if the email was sent to multiple staff members, does IMS slash iEmail have a way of verifying duplicates are not entered? Uh, yes, it will only insert one uh, activity per uh, record. Sometimes you will see multiple records are showing, so if someone's in the two in the carbon copy, but it will only insert one activity per record. If I'm not answering these good, don't hesitate to fire back with another one. Um, so adding the department adds the tickler to anybody in that department? No, that would be cool. Unfortunately, it does not. Uh, the department was just a way to categorize it. Currently, today, the way IMS works, a, uh, a tickler that has a date but no assigned to 
appears on everyone's task list. So you have the ability to assign it to everyone that uses IMIS or just one specific person. Uh, that unfortunately is uh, IMIS rules, but that's a cool enhancement for them. Um, did I hear, oh, how much bloat does this add to an IMIS database keeping EML files, etc.? That is a good question. A lot of it depends on how many uh, and how big the attachments are. We work with a company, the company that actually asked us to add the EML in there, they have been tracking um, every email sent. Uh, they actually were saving the EML and then going in, creating an activity and attaching it there. Uh, this is an insurance-based organization. The attachments are huge. The email is huge. I will tell you, over the past 12 years that they've been doing this, their database did get to be rather large. Um, so if the attachments are huge, uh, it's going to start to wear on your database. But if they're not, if they're sending in things like resume and whatnot, it's not a significant hit to the size of your database. Did I hear that activity task tickler, ticklers, I can't say it in the staff site, will be included in the upcoming release? Yes, Joe, you did. Uh, ASI is adding the ticklers to the next release of IMAS. I don't want to ruin anything, but that is due in the next month or two, by the way, um, the next GA release. It'll be an early adopter release, and then it'll go out. So ASI has gone uh, silent now. They are busy running through all of their tests to make sure that the new system works and a new version of IMIS uh, will be coming out in the next month or two. Uh, please clarify the duplicate activity. But Anna and Ginger both try to enter the email as an activity. Ah, there you go. Does IMIS allow that or will it block one? Uh, if they both enter the email, that's a very good question. If the activity is the same, it should block it. Um, I'll test that for you and get back. But I know that um, in IMIS, when I try to, uh, in I email, when I try to re-add something, so in Mary's record, when I go to insert and I say activity detail, as long as I get the information correct, like it's a resume and hit save, um, that did not work. It should have told me, oh, it's checking to make sure all the fields are the same. And so since I had Mary on here, and I had her resume, and I believe I had set a department on hers. Um, all, if all those fields are the same, it will alert you that it's a duplicate. Um, but we could certainly look at enhancing to say uh, another activity of that same date and time was recently entered. Are you sure you want to do it? So that would be a pretty cool thing to add. Whew, that's a lot of questions. Uh, I'm hoping I got all of those on there. If not, um, feel free to email us or email me if you like. There's my email address on there. We we're right at the 30 minute mark. So I want to thank you very, very much for uh, giving up part of your day. As Brittany said, this will be recorded. It will be put on our website today. today. And uh, if you have any questions, we'd love to uh, answer them. If you have any ideas for enhancements, it's really, really what we love um, because this entire EML thing, uh, which really has turned IEmail into this closed loop uh, communication system, was from a client um, that needed this functionality. And as you can imagine, they were going and saving EML and actually then creating an activity and attaching an IMIS. So IEmail saved them a whole bunch of time, but they had to have the EML. And just because we added that, it turned into all sorts of other great things you can do. So thanks again. If you have any questions, email me, and I really appreciate your time. Have a great rest of your week.